we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this opportunity to continue on in the series of Rethinking the Church. We ask that you'll touch our minds, touch our spirits, touch our hearts, that we will pursue after you wholeheartedly, and that we will walk in the power of your church. We thank you now for the opportunity to speak to your people. We ask that you'll touch my lips and my mind, that I will declare your wondrous works. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank everybody for participating in the praise and worship. And just a reminder that uh, we won't be having Tuesday night Bible study this week. Also, I, I, something I just, just clicked in my mind, I definitely want to celebrate uh, my mom number two. Uh, I don't call her mom-in-law, I don't call her mom-in-love, I call her mom. Because uh, she, she's, she's my mother. <coughs> and I'm her honey. <laughs> and I know that. And so uh, we just want to celebrate 80 years of life. 80 years of life. We thank God for her. And we thank God for doing a great and mighty work in her. Mom, uh, I tell folks the first time I met Mom, I was scared of her. Uh, I still am today, but I ain't going to tell her out loud. I mean, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just love her so much. I just love her so much. And, and just how she... Uh, She's just, she's just a great example of how living your life and just honoring God will be a, be a blessing to you. And uh, it's, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Amen. And then um, I, I definitely love her so much for having her third child, which <laughs> they wasn't planning on having, but they had her just for me. And, I, and I'm so glad that they had her and that she is just keeping me straight which is a task within itself. But we thank you and we honor you, Mom, for 80 years of life. Oh, yeah. Awesome. All right, we're going to... I thought I was done, but then something else came to my mind, so we're going right back to where we were last week in 1 Corinthians. The 12th chapter, the 12th through the 27th verses. And it says... For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as he hath pleased him, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where is the body? But now are there many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And as we looked at this last week, um, we, we discussed how... The church, coming from the premise of rethinking the church, which is our series, and we wanted and, and we wanted to bring out how we have missed what our definition is and started defining ourselves by what our actions should be. One of the one of my mentors had this saying that kept coming to my mind this week, 
and he says we have to have a revelation of a difference. Things that we assume are the same, a lot of times, are different. And so when we say church and we say fellowship, we sometimes think we're saying the same thing. But we have to understand the revelation of a difference. The revelation of a difference is, is like we talked about last week, the church is the assembly, the assembly of ourselves together. And we talked about how in Hebrews it says, don't, don't forget about assembling together. Because some folks have. But we have to come together in order so that we can encourage one another, so that we can help one another, that we can strengthen one another. Fellowship is the coming together and making all things common. So a church, as we talked about, is the ecclesia, the ones that have been called out. And it, and it goes by the definition of those that have been called out of their homes to come to a public place whereby they can have discussion and help one another to achieve a goal. Similar to the assembly when the Egyptians, uh, when the Israelites left Egypt and God called them around Mount Sinai and had them assembled together so that he could tell them the directions that they needed to use in order to go forward. So Jesus, in Matthew 16, 18, says the same thing. He says, upon this church that he will build And building on the church, the called out ones, the specific ones that he has designated, according to those that have adhered to the word of which he has declared, that you must come through him in order to be in the right relationship with the Father. And he calls us out to say that we are the ones that have chosen to be selected, chosen to be selected, in order to be the example or to be the, the, uh, uh, yeah, the example of God's body on the earth. Just as Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, that there's many of us, but we have one body. And if we have one body, that therefore means that we should have one purpose. That we should all operate in one direction. But where we have kind of messed this up is we have uh, designated what our action is, which is fellowship, is who we are. We are not a fellowship. We are an assembly, a group brought together, called out, and brought together in order to hmm, in order to cause a change in our community, in our environment, in our world. We are called out to do that. We do that through the process of fellowship. The process of fellowship means we make all things common. And so we bring all ourselves together and we look at one another and we say, okay, you're good at this, I'm good at this, let's bring it together so that we can make it better all around. Mm -hmm. So that we can complement and supplement each other. So that we can all be successful. But what has happened is that we have allowed the, the, the thought process of the world to cause us to now look at, is this person better than me? And instead of us operating in community, we have started operating in competition. Am I better than him? I know I'm better than him. I'm smarter than him or her. And so we have removed the, the power of the Spirit to operate in our assemblies because we have changed our focus from glorifying God to positioning ourselves to be better than the persons that we're operating with. And so what ends up happening is that the body then doesn't look like a body. Because it's disjointed. It's not joined together properly as it should be. And so what we see is then the sticky note which says, 
even a dislocation needs attention. If something is out of place, it needs attention. If you dislocate your finger, that means it don't look right. And you just can't stare at it and make it fall back into place. There has to be some pulling and some moving and some maneuvering in order to get your finger back into its proper place so that it can function properly. And that's the same thing that we need to do. That's why it's important for us to assemble ourselves together. So if throughout the week you've been bumped, you've been bombarded, and you've been hurt, and something's out of place, you can come to your brothers and sisters in the assembly, and they can assist you in putting it back in place. And so that's what our desire is. When we have to rethink the functionality of the church. The church is the assembly coming together. With a common purpose, which is to lift up Jesus. But not only to lift up Jesus, but to help one another in operating in this body. And as we operate in this body, we then assist the universal body of Christ in doing its mission. We all know that we're, as a nation, we're going through a transition period right now. And folks is losing sleep, and folks is being upset and all these other things. But the, the body of Christ shouldn't, it shouldn't be any different. It doesn't matter who's in position. Because we serve the king of all the kings. The Lord of all the lords. Because we serve him and him alone, we don't get wrapped around what's happening in the world because we are the influencers of the world. The world doesn't influence us. Because we assemble ourselves together, we encourage one another, and we walk in the power of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm all off my notes, but we're just going to have fun anyway. Yeah. So what we're going to look at is the fact that God has given us the grace that we need in order to reflect His glory to this earth. And he has used the imperfectness in us in order to show everyone that you can have faults, you can have failures, but the process that we're going to put you into is to bring you out of where you were, have you assemble with this group that are just like you but different, and y'all come together for a purpose, which is to glorify God, and it helps you to become better. And so that's the direction that we want to walk in. That's why we have to rethink the church. The church is just not something we do because mom and dad or grandma and grandpa made us do it over all these years. Or this is the church, this is the, the group that we met with in our family for all these years. There's a purpose for the church. It's not just something to do on Sundays. It's a lifestyle. It's a relationship. It's a power that you can grab hold of, which gives you victory over every situation. Yes. And so we have to understand what we have a hold of. And the, it's just like this. If you own a Lamborghini, and you only drove that Lamborghini at 45 miles an hour, that car will break down on you eventually. You know why? Because you wouldn't even you wouldn't even have to come out of first gear. The first gear goes up to I think like sixty five. So what good is it for you to have a Lamborghini if you're not going to fully utilize it for its purpose? Its purpose is to get on the highway and go fast. That's why we don't have it in the United States. Well, we do, but they they had to change it. They had to make some changes to the transmission because it's not the autobahn. But what I want to bring, the point I'm bringing out is, if we don't use something for its purpose, if we abnormally use it, it's called abuse. And if we don't use the body that Jesus has designated for us to operate in, in the proper design, then we are abusing the body. Now how many of us have abused our bodies? Y'all know. Getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning eating ice cream. Don't drink enough water. And now, 
Get up in the morning, take you 30 minutes just to turn so you can get out the bed. And you got to stretch and you got to... If we do not treat the body right, we're going to have action and reactions. And so we have to treat our physical body right, and we have to treat the body of Christ correctly. Our feelings are getting hurt because somebody says, Brother, I don't think that's the way you should do that. But because we're smarter than them, they can't tell us nothing. Right. What have we become? What are we becoming? We have to rethink the functionality of the church. And we have to walk in its design. Now, I know some of us think we're going to live forever. But there's going to be a time that Jesus is returning, and I believe it's very soon. And we want to be the bride that is in the proper clothing. Right. And in order for us to get the wrinkles of life out of our out of our clothing, there needs to be a pressing. There needs to be some heat and some some maneuvering applied to our garment so that it looks presentable for the bridegroom. And part of that is the pressing and the dealing with it, us bearing one another's burdens and us confronting one another and helping one another to be what God has called us to be. And I'm not talking about being petty and about all up in each other's business in order to say I'm better than you, but truly and genuinely having the desire to assist someone to be successful in what God has called for them to do. That's what the body is about. That's what we should be for. So the revelation of a difference is the church is the assembly. The fellowship is what we do. It's not the same. The church is a noun. Fellowship is a verb. All right, let's just do it like that. So that we all understand the church is a person, place, a thing. If y'all need, y'all remember from elementary school. Person, place, a thing. Fellowship is action. Fellowship is action. Bringing things in common. Glorifying God together. Lifting Him up together. Walking in the power of the commonality. Knowing our brothers and our sisters. Not just a Sunday social event. Not just a Sunday meeting. But spending time together. How many of us know the phone numbers? of at least three or four folks in our congregation that we can call on. How many of us do? And how many of us have called on? We have to get ourselves in the right mindset. It's about us, but it's more so about Jesus. It's about how we are operating and how we are moving in what Jesus has called for us to do. He told us to go thee therefore and to preach the gospel to every nation. But first, the gospel has got to be a part of us. We have to be a living example of how the gospel operates. And we know that God is love. And we know that God desires for us to be successful. But there are some things that we have to go through in order to achieve what God has for us to achieve. If we want our body to be in shape, we've got to go through a workout. And we have to come together. One of the things that you try not to do in the gym is lift heavy weights by yourself, especially when you lift in free weights. Because if your muscles give out and you're doing the bench press and that 300 pounds of laying across your chest, it's not a good feeling, especially when you can't get it off of you. But when you have a spotter or spotters, somebody that can help you and allow some of the weight to come off of you and allow you to go through your workout. In the same manner, Jesus told us in Matthew 11, chapter, he says, listen, he says, take my yoke upon you. For my earth burden is easy, my yoke is light. 
Why can't we reflect Jesus and help our brothers and sisters when we see them going through something, bearing one another's burdens? And not doing it as, it, as he said in Galatians, so that we can say we're better than someone, but saying, I may one day be going through a situation that I need someone to help. So why don't I help somebody else? And so we have to look at the difference between church and fellowship and realize, number one, that it is a difference. Number two, there's some things that we need to do in that difference that it requires something within us to do it in order to go forward. And we have to realize how important relationships, we always talk about, I'm not religious, I'm relational. But it's, it's just like what, what uh, John said. He says, how can you say you love God who you've never seen and don't even speak to your brother or his sister or even show love to your brother or sister who you see all the time? Not that we say that we're, we're not religious, we're relational, but we don't have a relation with anybody in our assembly. That's a quandary, isn't it? That makes you really have to think. And I don't want you to look across the aisle to the left or to the right and point fingers and say, yeah, you're talking to him. Now, this, this is one of those mirror situations. I just want you to look in the mirror and account to yourself, am I doing everything that I'm supposed to do? And if I'm not, Lord, help me to be better. But don't put it all off on the Lord. That means you got to do something. I'm waiting on Jesus to tell me. He already done told you. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I didn't got sidetracked. The relationship with Jesus requires us to have a relationship with other people. <laughs> the relationship with Jesus requires us to have a relationship with people. Let me rewind that one time. The relationship with Jesus requires for us to have relationship with people. So how can I say that I'm not religious, I'm relational, and don't nobody like me because I'm too mean? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the mirror, I'm talking to myself. All right? How can people say that? I'm relational, but they have no relations. If you ask them to point out their circle of friends, they can't give you one name. But they say, the salvation is not just so that you can go into heaven. Salvation is that God has called you out for you to be a part of his assembly that's going forth and declaring his goodness to a dying world. We have folks that are going crazy because of, of, of the, of the uh, administration change, but where's the church's voice? Where are we declaring to folks? Don't worry about who's in charge of the White House. Worry who's sitting on the throne. Yes. If you concern yourself with who's sitting on the throne, you don't get so wrapped around who's sitting in the White House or who's, who's the governor or who's the mayor. Because you know that God has the heart of the king in his hand. And he can maneuver him wherever he... He sold us all... Okay, see, now... now we are responsible for praying for those that are in leadership. We talked in the Bible study. I know y'all wasn't there, but the, we, the, the Bible study that we discussed, we said it simply like this. That we are supposed to love those that we don't like. We're supposed to pray for them. We're supposed to show the goodness of God to those 
even when us fathers tell us that we're supposed to pray for them, even when they put you down and despitefully use you, that means they just really put you down. But we're still supposed to show love and pray for those persons because there's something about the power of prayer. Prayer makes you intimate with the one that you're praying to and the one that you're praying for. And when we change our attitude toward the ones we're praying for, we actually change how they interact with us, which then causes them to know that there's something different about us and uh, causes a desire for them to want to know what has caused us to change. And so as we're rethinking the church and as we're going through this process, we have to understand that it's a commonality, that we're coming together as an assembly, making all our, our gifts and our talents something in common. We're not uh, uh, hoarding our abilities, but we're putting our abilities forth for the assembly to use in order for us all to affect the community, but most of all, to give God glory. So I had to get that off my chest before we could go on to the next part of the series. Because it's very important for us to understand that church is a noun and fellowship is a verb. The church fellowships. That's what we do. We make all things common. If you got a truck and I need a truck, it, 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 I don't have to come beg you. All I got to do is say, hey, can I borrow your truck? Well, you can't borrow it, but I'll drive it wherever you want to go. Because some folks don't like other folks driving their vehicles, but that, that's fine. But, that, but, but that's my point. We should all feel that we can utilize one another's stuff in order to help us to become successful. And you ain't got to agree. I'm just telling you how the body's supposed to function. That's all I'm trying to tell you. That we have a way that we're supposed to function. And if we don't function right, guess what? They end up giving us medicine. Yeah. They end up having to give us braces because the knees ain't working right. And they had to, you know, go in there and put replacement parts and all this other stuff if the stuff doesn't work right. But we want to have a functioning body. We want to have a body that is lean, mean, and a fighting machine. Amen. So that we can give God glory in all things. And so, as I'm closing... I just want to emphasize the fact that every part of the body, as, as, as uh, Paul was bringing out, is important. There's no part that is unimportant. We need all parts of the body because they all have a function. And if we recognize that, that every part of our body has a function and that we need that part, and if we treat each other like you're important, I think it'll change the whole atmosphere of the church and it thus change the whole attitude of the community. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity for us to really talk about the revelation of the difference between a church and fellowship. And God, we thank you that most of all, that the most important part of this entire situation is the fact that recognizing that Jesus 